how to do this. It's a trick question, but it's a good question. And when you're two columns, how many times do you have to do it? You don't have to do it because this formula here is telling you mu1 versus mu, you know, you decide the answer right, up, right by the F formula. If there are five columns, and I think there are some examples with five columns in the homework, how many times do you have to repeat this over? Close, but not right. Closer, getting warm. But there are 10 times, all right? Because you do five, choose two, and you're gonna get 10, okay. Now, what's gonna be the key calculation? Now, very, what, if, you had to, if you didn't know too much statistics, and you didn't know the fact that the formulas are more complicated than they often you might think they are, but you, what would be a simple calculation to compare group one to group two? What would be the simplest calculation you can think of? Yes, Joe? Yeah, x bar one minus x bar two. And that turns out to be the right answer, with one small exception. Let's say it turns out that x bar one is equal to three and a half, and this comes out to four. Now, how much is three and a half minus four, Joe? It's minus a half, right? What about if this was four and this is, what if it was the opposite, four and a half, four minus three and a half? Do we care about the minus sign, really? Is, is it a half a point below or a half a point above? We want to see how far apart they are. So how do you indicate mathematically that we don't, yes, Joe? So the formula really requires, you get rid of the, remember I told you there are no minus signs in this entire chapter 11 or chapter 12. So you get rid of the minus sign over there. Okay, now you take that difference, let's, say, let's, let's actually do it. So what's the average of group one? Well, we know the average because we know the T1 already from the first time we did this thing. T1 is equal to, T2 is equal to, T3 is equal to. Uh, we did that, this came out to, I believe, 22. Let's see, 22. This came out to seven. This came out to eight, nine, close. Uh, this came out to nine. So what's the average of the first group? What's the, in other words, we need to, in order to apply this formula, we basically need the average of the first group, the average of the second group, and the average of the third group. So what's the average of the first group? Here I should ask people, because this is like you know, fifth grade work, what's the average of the first group? You take nine divided by three, and remember the sample size, let's put down the sample sizes. The sample size of the first group was three, because we needed that before the sample size of the second group happened to also be three, and the sample size of the third group is also three. So you take the, the total divided by the sample size, of course, gives you the average, which is, of course, three. So the first calculation we're gonna do right over here, if we're gonna do the, the formula and the numbers on the same piece in the same part of the board, this is three. How much is the average of the second group? How much is seven divided by three? 2.33, and taking it out of two decimal places is fine. And the difference is 0.67, and then you, you take an absolute value, you stay at 67. So the answer after all is said and done for the first calculation is 0.67. We can repeat that same exact thing for the second pair of group averages, the third pair of averages, but let's move on to the more challenging, how do you figure out the critical range? Now that's a formula. Now if I ask you what's gonna go into that formula, you would say, I don't know, the standard deviations, the sample sizes, blah, blah, blah. What I'm asking right now is, is even, it's a very hard question, probably too hard to really answer because we haven't gotten to so many details of this whole chapter. What number, again, if you looked at it, please don't answer the question, it's not fair. But if you're just looking at this for the first time, the critical range is going to involve the sample sizes, obviously. It's going to involve the standard deviation because the variation is always thrown. But when I say throw in the variation, we, which number on the board or which symbol on the board or, or letter on the board really measures the true amount of variation in this particular example? And we're going to see it's going to show up in the, in the formula as well. Which of all those numbers measures the standard deviation? And there are a lot of them. All, remember, all these things are variances and standard deviations, so a lot of possible answers. What do you think is the most reasonable as a single measure of the true amount of variation among all these numbers? Yes. Now, the F embodies these other numbers, so the F embodies everything, so that will be, you know, you're not wrong by saying that, but it's more, we've got to plug in a specific number that represents the amount of variation. Somebody else? What? The answer is the MSW. Remember, the MSW is the variation within, which is what? That was the experimental error. That's just the fact that people are different in this particular, how, how far are the people apart in this particular set of data. Now, another good answer, which, which I'm not sure, uh, would be the total, because that's really also the total variation. But it turns out the MSW is the right answer. So now let's write out the formula for the critical range. We'll put it right over here. Critical range equals. Now, it's going to depend like all the other things. It depends upon the alpha, because if you want to be this, this far apart or that far apart, it depends upon the going to some kind of a diagram, like a T diagram or the Z diagram. It turns out you go, or the F diagram, you go to something called a Q table. Here's where it's built in the, this different 
adjustment due to, to the fact that we have multiple comparisons. You go to the Q table and you look up a number. How do you look it up? Well, it's very similar to the F. You go across and you're going to go down. You go down, N minus C degrees of freedom, and I should also point out that you need to have a particular alpha. In this case, let's make it 0.05, but there's also another table for 0.01. It's very similar to the F table. Now, what, how much across did we go for the, for, the, for, the, uh, for the F table? What was the numerator degree of freedom for the F table? C minus one. So here's an important thing to remember. I'm telling you, make very explicitly, so you don't make the mistake on the test. You go across C. So the difference between the F table and the CQ table is you go across C. You don't go across C minus one. So please keep write that down and remember that. And this in turn is multiplied by MSW divided by two. So it's like the variation divided by two times one over NI plus one over NJ. And again, this is on the, uh, Ryan, this is on the, uh, this is on the board? Okay, now, somebody said, what is NI and NJ? Well, if you, if we had the exact same symbol in the formula for the SSA and the SSW. Remember, this is the N1, this is the N2, and this is the N3. So why is the formula so complicated sounding as NI and NJ? Because it depends which pair of columns you're comparing. If you're comparing the first and the second column, then it's N1 and N2. If you're comparing the second and the third column, then it's N2 and N3, so it changes. So you might say, but it always stays the same number. So it's going to be 3, 3, and 3. Well, in this particular example, it's 3, 3, and 3. But some other example, it might be 3, 5, and 7, or 3, 5, and 13. It doesn't have to be the same number. So we need to have a separate symbol for each particular sample size, for each particular comparison. Yes? Q is something we'd look up, in, like, like we looked up the F and the F table. Next to the Q, the, after the F table is a Q table. It just on the table, you got to look up. So we have the Z table, the T table, the F table. Now we have the Q table. In the next chapter, we'll have another chi square table. Is each each mathematics? We're not really showing you the mathematics of this stuff to really prove that it's got to be Q or F or something. But it's a different amount of variation that got to be accounted for by the table. Yes. You multiply. We'll do it right now. So let, I'm just telling you to check it up. You got to plug in one, two, three, four numbers into this formula. So let's plug them in. We'll leave this for the end because that requires you to have the table, which I suspect most people don't have. What are, what are you going to plug in for the MSW? Well, we don't have it on the board, but I want, we're using these same numbers, and you have from your notes. What was the MSW? What? Was it 22? I don't remember that. 1.2. Okay, so the number for the for the the set of data that we had originally, this was a 1.22. So 1.22 goes here. Um, what about the two? Well, the two is built into the formula. You never change that because we're comparing two groups. What about the NI? How much numbers was in the, we're, now we're going we're gonna to apply this to the first group. In a, so this is NI and this is NJ. How many numbers were in the first group? So it will be a three here and a three here. Okay, so this is one third plus one third times one point, whatever it comes out to. And finally, how do you look up the Q table? Well, you got to go to the Q table, which I probably don't have myself. Anybody have the Q table with them? We don't, we're in trouble. Anybody have a Q table? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we have a Q table. I know it's in the back of the book. Anybody who has a book and can look for it you might find it before me. Uh, Q, page E10. So it seems to be on page uh, uh, 933. And we, there is a separate Q for the 0.05 and a separate Q for the 0.01. We want the 0.05. We're going across to column number two, remember, because you go across, I'm sorry, column number three, because there's, there's three columns here. And you go down to N minus C, which was 15, I'm sorry, which was nine minus three, which was six, right? So you go across to column three, you go down to row number six, and what you see there is 4.34. You can check it out. So if anybody has a table, you go across to you go across to the, that page 934. I just said I think you go across to row three, column three, down to row number nine minus uh, nine minus three is six. To rows number six, and what you see there, after all is said and done, is 4.34. How many people have the Q table? Found it? How many people found the 4.34? Anybody who's looking for it can't, can't find it. You guys find it? You found it? Okay. So now, of course, you take, a little, take out your calculator, and what do you get? From this times this times this, what do you get? 
you got to do this, then you got to square root it, right? Thank you. And then you got to multiply it by 4.34. Now we can do this in our head a little bit. One third plus one third is two thirds.